Good morning and a very good morning. Today I'm going to have a webinar on classical conditioning and this webinar is for NIBM Global and I am Jitin Benedict. Classical conditioning, have you heard about this particular topic? If not, I would say it is something that has been very much useful as well as been used in everyday parlance. This classical conditioning is a theory that has been developed by Pavlov. Now Pavlov, I would rather say he was one of the most iconic psychologists in from Russia. Ian Pavlov was a famous Russian psychologist who lived in 1849 to 1936. Now he has made many discoveries in the psychology field and for all his discoveries uh, the world awarded him Nobel Prize in Psychology in the year 1904. Now this particular theory called classical conditioning is what fetched him Nobel Prize in 1904 and classical conditioning is a learned reflex response that you do when evoked by a stimulus. Now Palvelo formed experiments with dog on to collect saliva. That is the highlight of classical conditioning where there is the experiments done by Ian Palvelo on dogs of salivating. I think now some of you might have got some idea about what I am speaking about the classical conditioning. Palvelo performed experiments with dog on to collect saliva. He noticed that dogs would salivate when powdered milk was present. Now I would rather make it a simple story. Palvelo was having a pet dog. One day what happened was Palvelo's pet dog's most favorite dish was powdered meat. Now he understood that Palvelo understood that whenever powdered meat is being given to dogs they salivate or when they when the when his maid was bringing powdered milk powdered meat the dog started salivating. Then what happened was he thought that he wanted to uh, add an extra normal conditioning to this. He started ringing bell but nothing happened. There was no change. The dog did not even bother about that. Then what he did was that on the third stage he rang bell and very soon he asked the maid to bring the powdered meat. Then dog automatically started making a connection in his brain saying that whenever a bell is rung then the meat would be brought. So they are trying to club uh, something like a ringing of a bell to the bringing of the meat. Later on the last stage of his experiment he simply rang the bell and then what happened the dog started salivating. Now so this is what is the ultimate funda or the basic story of Palvelov's classical conditioning. Palvelov associated the ringing of the bell with the presence of a powdered meat. He rang the bell every time the dogs were served food. Palvelov started ringing the bell and the dogs would salivate without the powdered meat being present. Thus there formed a learned reflex. Now uh, we give some psychological terms to this. During the conditioning, the neutral stimulus, now the tone is the neutral stimulus. So at first you have unconditional stimulus called food and unconditional uh, response called salivation. Later what happened was there was a neutral stimulus called bell. Then they tried to do during conditioning the unconditional stimulus plus unconditional response, bell plus uh, the, the sorry the bell plus the food and finally what happened after conditioning the conditional stimulus that is the bell and the salivation conditional response started coming in. So after conditioning the neutral stimulus became elicits salivation which became the conditional response. So to make things clear uh, un unconditional stimulus is the meat unconditional response is a salivation, neutral stimulus is the tone. Now what happened was ultimately when there was a neutral stimulus the conditional stimulus that is the salivation automatically started to happen. 
Now there is a process called as acquisition. Acquisition is an initial stage in classical conditioning in which an association between a neutral stimulus and an unconditional stimulus would take place. Here in this case the ringing of the bell and the salivation was clubbed together. Sorry, the ring of the bell and the bring of the meat was clubbed together. In most cases for conditioning to occur, the neutral stimulus need to come first before the unconditional stimulus. So it is always advisable uh, to ring the bell before bringing the meat. So that unconditional stimulus should happen just 10 seconds before the time gap between the two stimuli should be half a second. That would be that would be optimal. So this particular classical conditioning what uh, Pavlov start try to do in dogs is very much applicable in day-to-day -day life. I'll give one simple example. For example, uh, in my class, everyday class of mine, just imagine that uh, the teacher walks and sits at the desk and then uh, the teacher goes towards the board when it's ready to teach and the uh, children's quiet down. This is normal phenomenon on the first day. But the next day, the students are a little bit chattery and all and the teacher goes to the board and teacher shouts or asks the students to be quiet. On the third day also, he the children are a little bit chattery and the teacher shouts when teacher is walking towards the board, teacher shouts at the children. The next day onwards, as when the teacher goes to the board, the children automatically start settling down. The, uh, the conditional response that happens here is that children settling down and movement towards the uh, board is, the, is, is something that is being paired with them. So this kind of pairing can happen with most of the things that you undergo in your daily life. So uh, Ian Palvelov has made a very remarkable study on classical conditioning which is applicable to most of us. So you try to apply in your life so that things would try to happen on your own. To, to conclude, I would rather say classical conditioning is a theory by Ian Palvelov, a Russian psychologist and his theory is still resounds much uh, louder than the bell he rung for the dog. Thank you. This is Jitin for NIPM Global.